wanted to surprise my wife, but heard noise coming from the bedroom. As I reached the top, it was clear. Hey, Reddit, I've been a longtime user of this social media platform, but today I'm using a throwaway account because I need to share something personal without it being linked to my main account. I just found out that my wife has been cheating on me while I've been traveling and working hard to provide for us. The sense of betrayal and rage that I feel is really overwhelming right now, and I'm at a loss for what to do. A bit of backstory about us. My name is Louise and I'm 36 years old. My wife's name is Veronica and she's 34. We've been married for about two years, but our history goes way back to high school. We met during those teenage years, started dating right away, and even attended the same college to stay together. I've always tried my best to be there for Veronica, listening to her and supporting her dreams. We have plans to start a family. Years ago, we had both made the mutual decision that we would start having kids once we were in our 30s and in a better place financially. But despite us achieving that now, Veronica still says isn't ready yet for kids, no biggie. I'm fine with waiting as I definitely do not want to rush, force, or coerce her into doing anything she doesn't want to. I work as a top-level consultant, which means I travel extensively for international projects. While this provides for us financially as I earn very well, it also means that I'm away from home often, leaving Veronica alone. She's a stay-at-home mom and doesn't work at all. Despite Veronica's ungratefulness and constant complaints whenever I had to travel for work, I always tried my best to be there for her in every possible way. I understood her loneliness when I was away, and I felt guilty for leaving her alone. I would apologize profusely, reassuring her that it was necessary for our future, and that I didn't enjoy being away either. I encouraged Veronica to spend time with her friends because I hoped it would alleviate some of her loneliness. However, her behavior towards them was always often rude, bitchy, and backstabbing. It always didn't take long for her friends to see her true colors and distance themselves from her. I witnessed this pattern repeatedly where her friendships would start off well but eventually crumble and end due to her toxic behavior. Veronica liked to play the victim, claiming she was a loner by choice. However, the truth was that her manipulative and deceitful nature drove people away. It wasn't that she didn't have friends because she preferred being alone. It was because her actions pushed people away. It was heartbreaking to see her isolate herself, but at the same time I couldn't ignore the fact that she was the cause of her own loneliness. Of course, I couldn't stand idly by and watch my wife's relationships crumble due to her own actions. I intervened several times, trying to mend the rifts she had created with her friends. I even went as far as apologizing on her behalf because I knew fully well that Veronica was at fault. It wasn't easy to swallow my pride and apologize for someone else's behavior, but I did it because I wanted to salvage what I could of her friendships. However, Veronica's response to my efforts was always far from grateful. Instead of acknowledging her mistakes, she would play the victim card. She would scream, cry, and accuse me of not supporting her as her husband. According to her, I should have stood by her 100% no matter what. She believed she was always right and that I should unquestioningly support her, even in situations where she was clearly at fault. Veronica's temper was another problem in our relationship. When things didn't go her way or when she felt challenged, she would unleash her anger in screaming fits and tantrums. It was very exhausting and emotionally draining to deal with her outbursts especially when they stemmed from her own wrongdoing. But despite her difficult behavior, I continued to try and support Veronica, hoping that she would eventually realize the consequences of her actions and work towards positive change, and that things would improve, and that she would appreciate the efforts I made for our relationship, and notice how much I loved and supported her. In fact, in an attempt to help Veronica break out of her isolation and contribute more to our household, I suggested that she get a part-time job, I emphasized that it didn't have to be stressful or full-time. She barely even graduated no matter how much I pushed or tried to help her then. I even went as far as getting tutors and sometimes tutoring her myself, but she would always whine and complain about how school was hard. I just wanted the job to be something to engage her and give her a sense of purpose outside of the home. However, Veronica always refused. She would cite outdated gender roles and insisting that it was my responsibility as the man to provide for the house and it was her job as the woman to take care of the house. But despite taking care of all the bills and financial responsibilities, Veronica rarely lifted a finger at home. She would wait around for me to handle all the chores, cleaning, and cooking. It became so overwhelming that I eventually hired help to assist with these tasks. Unfortunately, even with help around the house, Veronica's behavior didn't improve. She would make promises to do better, but never followed through. Instead, she drove the helpers away with her rude and unbearable attitude. It reached a point where I would receive messages from the helpers even while I was away at work, stating that they couldn't continue working with Veronica due to her behavior. 
Whenever I tried to address these issues with Veronica, she would of course always play the victim and shift blame onto the helpers, refusing to take responsibility for her actions. Veronica's weight was also another constant source of tension in our relationship. It isn't about body shaming or making fun of her appearance. It's just about the unhealthy habits she had developed. Veronica was overweight because she ate so much. I'm not even going to joke around. I'm not trying to body shame her. She just ate so fucking much. And no, she had never been through any traumatic incident in her life that would cause her to trauma or binge eat. She just liked to eat and then she would whine and complain about how hard it was to lose weight, yet she would eat excessively. And no matter how much I tried to encourage healthier choices, it always led to conflicts. Her reactions were unpredictable and often explosive. Whenever I gave her a compliment, she would twist it and would throw a tantrum about how I meant the opposite thing and about how I was trying to indirectly mock her. If I didn't compliment her, she would accuse me of thinking she was unattractive. She would then throw a tantrum about how I thought she was fat and ugly and about how I never complimented her again. It constantly felt like I was walking on eggshells or glass because I never knew what would set off another tantrum. It was frustrating, to be honest. <laughs> and when I would try to encourage her to join me at the gym, not out of judgment, but out of a desire to promote health and well-being, I was always met with accusations of calling her fat and insinuating that she needed to lose weight. If I went without her or didn't invite her, it was seen as a sign of embarrassment or shame. She would throw a tantrum and say that I didn't invite her because I didn't want people at the gym to know she was with me and that she was my wife. It seemed like there was no winning her, no matter how I approached the situation. Veronica's insecurities were projected onto me in every aspect of our relationship. If I went out to maybe go get drinks or dinner with my friends without her, she would throw a tantrum that I was ashamed of her and that I was hating her because I thought she was fat and ugly. But if I invited her out, she would always refuse. She would throw a tantrum about how she was fat and ugly and how she didn't want anybody seeing her and how she was very self-conscious. Which I understand, but then she would then ask me to leave and go without her. And when I would go without her and come back, she would also throw another tantrum that I actually left without her, and that I must have cheated on her while there and that she didn't trust me, and that I must have felt so embarrassed of her because I didn't insist that she come with me. It felt like a constant cycle of accusations and misunderstandings. Despite all this, I was deeply in love with Veronica. I overlooked her flaws and insecurities because I wanted to make her happy. In my eyes, she was always right, and I was willing to go to any length to ensure her happiness, even if it meant always tiptoeing around her insecurities and tantrums. That's one of the reasons why this discovery of her cheating has hit me hard, especially knowing that I've been doing everything I can to make our lives better. This is a situation I never expected to face, and I'm seriously struggling to come to terms with it. Being a top-level consultant meant my work took me to different corners of the globe, often for months at a time. It was a very demanding career, but I never let it overshadow my commitment to Veronica. No matter how hectic my schedule got, I made it a priority to never to forget the milestones that mattered to us. Our anniversary, her birthday. I marked them in bold on my calendar, set reminders on my phone, and even left sticky notes around my workspace just to be sure. If I could be there with her, I would cancel any plans, no matter how important, just to spend the day celebrating us. But when work held me captive and I was unable to cancel, I always ensured that Veronica felt my presence through a torrent of romantic gestures. Flowers, gifts, heartfelt messages. I would send them from afar. I would arrange for surprises to be delivered to our doorstep for her when I couldn't be there in person. I would call her constantly just for a chance to hear her voice, share our day's highlights, and reassure her of my love for her. When my projects finally allowed me to return home, I spared no effort to make up for lost time. I would turn our date nights into this big extravagant thing all for her. I made sure they were exactly what she wanted, just as a way to show her how much I missed her when I was away. I was also always the one initiating sex and struggling to keep our spark. If I didn't initiate, she would complain about how I didn't want her and how I found her unattractive, but never once did she ever go out of her way to initiate sex. There were also times when Veronica forgot important things like my birthday or our anniversary. It hurt a bit, I won't lie, but I never let it get to me. I would just gently remind her and assure her that her love was more than enough for me. Looking back now, maybe my constant romantic gestures made her take me for granted sometimes. Maybe that's what made her see me as her footstool, and maybe that is what made her lose all her respect for me, because she noticed how I always went above and beyond to make her happy. I was always the one there for her, always the one going the extra length. Even with my frequent travels, I always tried to stay connected to Veronica. So when something shifted and when she started withdrawing emotionally, I noticed it. 
Her phone became her constant companion. It was always buzzing with messages and calls that seemed to captivate her even more than our conversations did, and they always seemed to bring a smile to her face, a smile that wasn't meant for me. I noticed all the changes, like the way she was always texting someone, laughing at her phone and being overly protective of it and keeping it glued to her side. She changed all her passwords, became paranoid about leaving her phone unattended, and when I asked to check her phone, it was like I crossed a line, and she accused me of being insecure and violating her privacy. I respected her boundaries, even though I knew something was wrong. Trying to talk to her became like shouting into a void. It felt like I barely existed in her world anymore, like she was drifting further away with each passing day. It was like talking to a wall. It felt like I barely existed in her world anymore. I wanted to bridge the gap to understand what was going on, but all my attempts were always met with defensiveness and avoidance. I tried to express my concerns and talk to her. I tried to reconnect with her on an emotional level, but it was as if she had built a fortress around herself. The more I tried to break through, the more she withdrew. When Veronica suddenly insisted on handling all the household chores herself and refused to hire help anymore, I smelled something fishy. It was like she was trying to cover her tracks or hide something. She said she didn't want any more helps in the house and asked me not to hire another one after the last one quit. When I asked her who would take care of the house, she said she wanted to start taking care of the house herself. Of course, I knew that was a bullshit lie, but I played along because I didn't want to tip my hand. Prior to this, I had installed security cameras in common areas like the living room, balcony, and dining room. Had gotten them before because I wanted to prove Veronica wrong as she had gotten a habit of blaming a hired help for something that was clearly her fault. I never told her about the cameras and I never installed them in the bedrooms because of privacy. Soon she started acting even more suspicious. Instead of staying home like she usually did, she was out for hours, running errands or who knows what. It was a complete turnaround from her usual routine. It was absolutely suspicious and didn't make any sense because like I mentioned before, Veronica rarely left the house and would even Instacart when she needed something. I debated whether to confront her right then and there, but I knew she'd just deny everything and cover her tracks. I wanted hard evidence, something I could show her to prove she wasn't being honest with me. So I played the waiting game, watching and waiting for the right moment to catch her red-handed. True to my word, I had to leave for an international project for a few weeks. It was during this time that things took a turn for the worse. Veronica started bringing over a guy who seemed out of place, to say the least. He looked to be in his late 20s and he looked rough like he'd been through a lot. And I initially thought Veronica was just being kind-hearted and helping someone in need. My gut told me something was off, but I tried to brush it aside, telling myself I was overreacting. However, it became evident that this was more than just a charitable act. The guy became a constant presence in our home, and they would disappear together for hours. I then realized that this was most likely her affair partner. I didn't have any cameras in the bedroom, so I couldn't see what they were doing there, but they would disappear for hours on end. They would be in the living room watching maybe a movie and then they would leave for hours on end to most likely go to the bedroom and then come back to the living room. Eventually, I couldn't deny the truth any longer. I installed cameras in our bedroom, hoping against hope that I was wrong. What I saw was like a punch to the gut. It was absolutely disgusting. My wife, the woman I loved and trusted, was cheating on me right in our own matrimonial bed. Then Veronica and the guy grew bolder and bolder. He acted like he owned the place. He would disrespect my home and me. I felt powerless not knowing how to confront them without causing a scene. Veronica knew my work schedule well and she took advantage of my absence to carry on with her affair right under my nose. I would come home and I would pretend as if everything was fine because I genuinely did not know what to do. I was confused and I just thought that if I ignored it, then he would probably just disappear and go away. It wasn't just the emotional betrayal that hurt. I started noticing strange debits in our joint account. Veronica insisted on us having a joint account from the beginning even before we got married. I wasn't keen on the idea at first because I knew she tended to spend impulsively, unlike me, who preferred to be cautious with money. But she pushed hard and threw tantrums until I gave in. Love makes you do things you wouldn't normally do. We had that joint account for years without any major issues. Then out of nowhere, I started seeing strange debits. They weren't huge amounts, but they were frequent and suspicious. It didn't take a genius to figure out what was going on. Either she was sharing her credit card details with this guy, or worse, she was using our joint account to fund their affair. That's when I decided to take matters into my own hands. I pretended to go on another work trip. I told my wife I was going away for a work trip and it would last for about two weeks. I left, she drove me to the airport and she didn't even wait until I had left for even a day before she brought him over. 
This time he started sleeping over. He had been at my house for about three days in total when I decided to surprise them. I had lodged in a hotel, but it was a bit far from the house as I didn't want any coincidences of running into them. I ordered some flowers to surprise my wife, then got an Uber to my house. They didn't even hear me get into the house before I even got to the bedroom I was already hearing their moans. And by the time I got to the top floor where our bedroom was, it was pretty clear that they were at it. I am crushed. I feel so angry and confused. How could she betray me like this after everything I've done for her? I genuinely couldn't bear to stay and confront them. So I just quietly left. I will get my revenge though. She wouldn't walk away from this without facing the consequences. I need advice and a place to rant, hence why I turned to Reddit. How do you go about such a situation? How do you deal with such a deep betrayal? How do you make sure justice is served without losing yourself in the process? I'm hurting, angry, and confused, but I won't let her destroy me without fighting back. I couldn't resist the urge to stir the pot a bit, so I sent her a text, casual as can be, saying that things wrapped up sooner than expected and I was on my way back home. Oh, the satisfaction I get from just imagining her scrambling to get her affair partner out of the house before I arrive. She will have to face the consequences of her actions. Any advice on how to navigate this whole shit show would really be appreciated. Reddit. Update. Hey Reddit, it's been a roller coaster since I last posted, around two weeks ago. I never expected the response my post received. It exploded with thousands of comments and DMs flooding in. I'm overwhelmed by the support and advice pouring in, though I must admit I couldn't reply to all of them yet. I'm trying my best and I'm grateful for every message and piece of advice I've received. The support from everyone has been incredible. The advice and comments have been varied, but a common thread is that many of you believe she deserves some form of revenge. Initially, when I made that post, I was consumed by anger. But now I've calmed down a bit, although not enough to forgive her. Revenge is still on my mind, and I've received plenty of creative suggestions from fellow Redditors. Some petty tactics are definitely in the works, haha, and I really appreciate the suggestions. Many of you advise me to check the divorce laws in my state, and I plan to do just that. I'll also be consulting with my lawyer to keep him informed of the situation. Some of you even shared ideas on how to subtly mess with her, which I find amusing and plan to maybe put into action. As for serving divorce papers, I'm holding off for now. I want to expose her infidelity in front of her family first. Her mom's birthday is coming up and I've hinted at having big news to share during the family dinner. I haven't disclosed the details to her mom yet, but our relationship is strong and I'm confident she'll be supportive. Like I've said before, she doesn't have any friends because of her behavior and even her family are almost fed up with her. This will definitely be the final nail in the coffin for her and they might even not take her in when I kick her out, which to be honest, I hope they don't. Her being homeless would be extremely satisfying after everything she has done to me. It's like being caught between a rock and a hard place. Since I'm home more now, Veronica's ability to support her affair partner financially has taken a hit. She can't easily slip money to him without me noticing. She used to freely spend from our joint account claiming it was for various expenses. However, with me around constantly, I can easily track our finances and question any unusual debits. When I asked her about her past spending, her answers about what she spent the money on were sketchy and vague at best. I couldn't check then, but now if she tries any funny business, I'll spot it right away. She's struggling to bankroll her affair without raising red flags. This gives me a chance to take back control of our cash. Considering I've been the breadwinner and primary earner and she's never brought in a dime or contributed financially due to never having worked, I have every right to the money in our joint account. I'm strongly thinking about emptying the account soon. If she notices and asks, I'll come up with a good excuse to lay her off my back and avoid arousing her suspicions. Also, since returning unexpectedly, things have been tense at home. My wife keeps asking about my travel plans, but I keep it vague. I also turn the tables on her when she presses, questioning why she's not happy that I'm home. It's clear she's antsy about not being able to see her affair partner or leave the house for lengthy periods while I'm around. I've even checked her phone and her partner seems equally anxious and keeps asking when I'll leave. They can't even make phone calls since I'm always home and she's trying her hardest not to be suspicious, haha. Like I think I've mentioned before, I did some digging into Veronica's phone and found out some shocking stuff about her affair partner. Turns out they met on a dating site and guess what? Veronica was actively using it, pretending to be single. It's crazy that the person I thought I knew has been living a secret life right under my nose. Thinking about how many times she might have cheated before with different guys makes me sick to my stomach. As I dug deeper, I found the guy's Facebook profile. The irony is off the charts. He's got a girlfriend and they're all lovey-dovey on social media. It's like a messed up game of cheaters finding each other. 
I guess birds of the same feathers really do flock together. I then checked his girlfriend's Facebook because part of me wants to spill the beans to his girlfriend, show her the proof from our home cameras and Veronica's phone. But I was stuck for a while. I wasn't sure if the best way to tell her would just be to send her message with all the evidence or ask to meet up in person first. I then decided that I should probably send her a Facebook message first and ask to meet up. I'll make sure to keep everyone updated as things progress. Thanks again for the overwhelming support and kind words. I really appreciate them all. Update. Hey Reddit, it's been a while, but I've got a major update to share. Remember when I said I messaged Alicia, the girlfriend of Veronica's lover? Let's call her Alicia to protect her privacy. Well, we met up, had some much needed coffee and dove into a serious conversation. Alicia was surprisingly cool about the whole thing. She said she'd been noticing weird changes in her boyfriend's behavior and finances, which aligned perfectly with what I'd observed with Veronica and her lover. Alicia's boyfriend, let's call him Joe, is apparently a lazy dude who barely shows up for work, and the only reason he hadn't been fired was that he worked for Alicia's dad. Sound familiar? Yeah. It's like a mirror image of Veronica's situation with me. Alicia's been the one holding things together for Joe, just like I've been doing for Veronica. As Alicia poured out her heart, I couldn't help but feel a connection. We were both dealing with partners who didn't appreciate what they had. It was heartbreaking to see how much she loved Joe despite his flaws. She even teared up a bit, and I felt a pang of sympathy. I handed over all the evidence I had, including those bedroom camera shots. Alicia made a joke about turning it into a homemade movie and putting it on some adult site, but honestly, I couldn't care less. They deserved whatever came their way. Despite the heavy topic, talking to Alicia was refreshing. We clicked instantly and I found myself enjoying her company. It felt good to share this burden with someone other than Reddit. I wanted to advise her not to confront Joe right away to avoid tipping off Veronica, but I held back. At this point, whether Veronica found out or not didn't matter. I was done with her and ready to move on. Alicia and I decided to stay in touch. Who knows, maybe we'll become good friends. She's a pretty cool person and I could use more positive vibes in my life right now. Update. Hey Reddit, it's been a while since my last update. I've been doing a lot of thinking, cleansing, and reflecting. I do have good news though. She is finally out of my house. She tried to fight and play the pity card, but of course that didn't work. So here's what went down. While counting down the days until her mother's birthday dinner, I expected Veronica's lover to spill the beans to her. Surprisingly, he didn't. Alicia, his girlfriend, told me that she had informed him she knew about the affair but didn't reveal her source or show him the evidence. That move caused him to cut off all contact with Veronica because he really wanted to rectify his mistake, and that made Veronica super anxious and fussy. I was thrilled. It was like karma served on a platter. Veronica, probably now realizing her mistake, started trying to act normal and even attempted to be intimate with me. She was now trying to hold conversations with me, even trying to be intimate and asking why we didn't have date nights anymore. Obviously, I shut that down real quick. Fast forward to the birthday dinner at her mom's. I got her mom a couple of gifts because, honestly, I felt a tad guilty about dropping the bomb on her big day. After dinner, when everyone was chill and the kids were occupied, I made my announcement. Right there in front of her entire extended family, I spilled the beans. I told them about her cheating, about the affair partner, and that we were getting a divorce. Chaos ensued. Everyone was yelling, screaming over each other's voices, questioning why she'd cheat. Veronica was in shock. I guess she probably didn't expect me to know. I used the chaos as my cue to bail. I knew if I tried kicking her out while she was there, things would get messy. She could get violent, and I didn't want that. I also wouldn't be able to call the cops to get her out because despite the fact that it is my house, it is also listed as her primary address, and that means that I cannot kick her out and I would have to undergo a whole eviction process that would take at least six months. That was way too long and I didn't want her continuing to live with me for that long. So I left her at the party and dashed home to pack up her stuff. I left her expensive things like the jewelry because hey, I paid for them and wasn't about to fund her escapades. She would probably sell them and then spend the cash. At this point, she was trying to blow up my phone with calls and texts asking me why I had left saying that we had to talk and I couldn't just ditch her like that. It was just a load of bullshit to be honest. She then said she was getting an Uber and coming home and that we would have to talk. Before all this, I'd already sorted our finances, cleared out our joint account, and set up separate ones. She kicked up a fuss, but I didn't give in. I started using the joint account strictly to pay for bills and necessities. I had previously left some cash in the joint account for some of those necessities, and that was what she then used to pay for the Uber after the birthday dinner. When Veronica came home and saw her stuff on the porch, all hell broke loose. 
She screamed so loud I thought the neighbors might call the cops for a noise complaint. I really didn't want the cops being called because again I would probably have to fold my hand and let her into the house because it was listed as her primary address. I genuinely didn't want that, and I just wanted her to leave quietly. So I stayed quiet and didn't respond to her. She then started banging on the door, screaming and even cried. She tried every trick in the book. She even tried calling and even texting me and I followed my lawyer's advice and didn't engage. I just made sure to document everything. She begged, apologized, and even pulled out Bible quotes, which was just ironic since she isn't even a Christian. I watched her have a whole ass meltdown on camera. She called her mom crying that she needed a place to stay. Predictably, her mom refused to let her in, which sent Veronica into more hysterics. She started crying even harder and accused her mom of being a heartless bitch. She then tried calling her affair partner, Joe, but he probably had her blocked. She was desperate. She even tried her old friends who all turned her down. I took matters into my own hands, sending out texts to everyone explaining everything and telling them not to let her in. Petty? Maybe. Deserved? Absolutely. I also informed my family about what went down so she wouldn't show up at their houses spinning some bullshit story. I should have called them ages ago, but it just kept skipping my mind because I was still in shock. Eventually, she left. The next morning, my phone was flooded with her messages. I ignored them and reached out to Alicia, who updated me on Joe's situation. Her dad fired him, but he was refusing to leave her apartment. I asked her if she needed my help getting him out, but she said she appreciated it and that I shouldn't worry. She said her dad and her brothers were coming over to kick him out themselves, and that in the meantime, she was staying with a friend. After kicking her out, the emptiness of the house has now hit me. I feel lonely, but I don't want company. I'm focusing on cleaning up and remodeling and just taking life slow. My friends have all been trying to cheer me up, my family members too, and even my soon-to-be ex-mother-in-law. Even Veronica's siblings have reached out, even some members of her extended family. My mom even suggested she come stay with me for a while or if I would prefer one of my younger siblings to stay with me for a while so that I wouldn't feel the loneliness much. But I told her it was fine and that I would greatly prefer to be alone. I am lonely, yes, but I will get over it. My lawyer is prepping the divorce papers. I won't be able to update in a while because I really don't know if it's legal or not to talk about a court case in the works, but I would rather not take my chances. I'll update once the court case is settled. A lot of you have been really eager to see this to the end and have been with me since the very beginning. I really appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Update. Hey Reddit, it's been a while, maybe three or four months since my last update. Sorry for the delay, life's been keeping me busy, but I've got some great news to share. I won the court battle against Veronica. I went through the court process and let me tell you, it was a ride. I didn't talk about this earlier because of legal reasons, but now that it's settled, I can spill the beans. After my last update, I was initially worried about Veronica getting alimony, but my lawyer, who's also a good friend, shared a loophole with me. He suggested transferring my assets temporarily to someone trustworthy to minimize what Veronica could get. Risky? Definitely. But the thought of Veronica getting a dime from me was intolerable, so I went for it. I chose to trust my mom with this plan. We kept it between us and she was fully on board. In court, Veronica was in for a shock. The majority of my assets were shown to be under my mom's name. She was livid to say the least, but she walked away with nothing. It was a moment of sweet victory. Seeing her face, that realization was priceless. She knew I had outmaneuvered her, but couldn't pin down how. It's a memory I'll cherish, second only to kicking her out. To celebrate, I took my mom out and had a great time with Alicia the following week. Alicia and I have been getting closer, and who knows, there might be something more between us down the line. She was thrilled that Veronica got nothing and that Joe got the boot from her life too, thanks to her family. It's been a wild ride, and I've made big strides since then. I made sure to block Veronica completely, shutting down any way for her to reach me. I even switched out the locks to be safe. I'm toying with the idea of selling the house and moving somewhere fresh, but that's still just a thought bouncing around. Right now, my main focus is looking after myself. I've been taking better care of my mental health, taking breaks from work, and just giving myself the time and space to heal. It's been a real journey, and I feel like I'm finally getting somewhere positive. I want to give a huge shout out to everyone who's been by my side, offering support, advice, and just being there. You guys have been a real lifeline during this tough time, and I'm so grateful. It's amazing how much strangers online can lift you up when you need it most. As I wrap up this part of my life, I'll be saying goodbye to this account by deleting it and going back to my main one. Thanks a million for everything and I wish you all nothing but the best. Stay awesome, everyone.